Hey, welcome everyone. The two liter BPY engine found in the Passat, Jetta, GTI, and their Audi counterparts in the mid to late 2000s was a very problematic engine for the Volkswagen Audi group. It's a fun engine, decent amount of power, but overall problematic. So today I wanted to share with you five quick tips when diagnosing the high pressure fuel system on this car. Now, if you're looking for deeper, more in-depth information, make sure to check out our four-part series where we actually go from diagnosing a P2293 trouble code to replacing the engine. This is just gonna be five quick facts that were learned and documented from that series. All right, quick tip number one. Volkswagen Audi knows there's a problem with the high-pressure fuel system on this engine. They have a TSB or a bulletin out there stating to inspect the camshaft and the camshaft follower in the event of a high-pressure fuel system code. There's an updated revised camshaft. There's updated parts for the high-pressure fuel pump. It is problematic and it can get very pricey very, very quickly for yourself or your customer when dealing with this engine. Know what you're getting into ahead of time before you go ordering any parts. Tip number two, test drive the vehicle. The high pressure fuel system needs to be loaded in order for it to actually uh, show a difference between actual and desired pressure. That spec is about 270 PSI difference between what the computer is asking for for pressure and what is actually being read by the sensor. You're going to have to load it. You can rev the car up all day long in the, in the bay and it will not uh, show you an issue. Test drive the vehicle graph the data. Tip number three, the high pressure system relies on the low pressure fuel system to supply it with enough fuel. That's a pump in the tank supplying to the mechanical underhood GDI pump. You need to verify the low pressure system. There's a Schrader valve right on there for a gauge. Drive it, get it under load and check that system for pressure, roughly 50 to 70 or so PSI on the low pressure system. Tip three A, the low pressure system can actually be checked using the high pressure fuel sensor. If you go ahead and unplug the high pressure fuel pump, that'll put it into default mode, which stops the high pressure from flowing, which gives us low pressure in our rail. Tip number four, when looking at the lab scope capture that we took while working on this vehicle, there weren't really any major differences between known good and setting a code. If you look at the capture, you'll see that the on time for both of them, the grounding of the pump was both roughly 4.7, 4.8 milliseconds. The current is the biggest difference here. Our current for our known good was roughly 6.8, 6.9 amps at warm idle. At warm idle on our pump that was coding, it was roughly 8.2 amps. The other takeaway that you wanna make sure that you're seeing is a small pintle hump on the current ramp on either side of it. So it's opening and it's closing. And you can see that in both the known good and the known not good. And tip number five, inspect, inspect, inspect. Don't get in over your head on this engine. Things can add up very, very quickly. It's not a cheap engine to work on. You may think that you just need a cam follower. The side cover for the camshaft is relatively easy to get off. It only takes a gasket really to uh, go ahead and R&R &R that, uh, that cover. Go ahead, pull that off, inspect the lobes of the camshaft that drive the high pressure pump because that camshaft is very, very common for wear. You don't wanna sell a job to a customer for a follower being worn out only to have it come back for camshaft failure. Who ends up eating that cost? Inspect, inspect, inspect on this two liter BPY engine. It is problematic for camshaft wear and then hopefully the camshaft bearings are okay on that engine. All right, so that was just five quick tips that I wanted to share. Try to keep everything in one place. Uh, again, if you're looking for the four part series, the link for all the videos is below in the description. Make sure to check that out if you're wondering how we progressed through from a diagnosis of a P2293 to engine replacement. If you found the video useful, if you enjoyed it, please give us that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Clicking the little bell icon will give you notifications when the next video that we have comes out. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for being there. And as always, happy wrenching everyone. Thank you.